Thank you and good morning. Um, so we, I think we all recognize that the BTK space, uh, it's a hostile environment. And atomically speaking, we're talking about small vessels and we just had a very good uh, case presenting the challenges of small diameters and its consequences. Uh, there are more vessels to treat. There's a lot of calcification and distribution and thrombosis calcification is different from SFA and already the conclusive disease. The average length of the lesions are longer compared to other segments on the vascular anatomy. And there is a more incidence of occlusions versus stenosis, creating really a difficult environment to work. In the beginning for paclitaxel, things looked okay. Uh, first in man back in 2013, uh, Germany and some other multi uh, in, international uh, investigators presented uh, placitaxel base or taxel base uh, compared to PTA, and you can see a significant decrease in risk stenosis rates uh, as well as target lesion occlusion. This led to a BTK uh, debate trial that again uh, you saw early preliminary successful, so this emboldened uh, researchers and um, you know, energy and marketplace into developing this technology. And we all went with the uh, impact deep, a randomized controlled trial, a two to one ratio for CLI, 358 patients, but sadly the preliminary data and long-term data show that standard PTA was as good as the uh, pachytaxel based balloon angioplasty. And this continues to be really no significant difference in freedom from major amputations and all cause survival at five-year mark, so you know, kudos to reporting long-term outcome that was actually uh, not uh, superiority of the study technology. Uh, and you can see there again, major, minor, CD, TLR, all-cause dead, and SA total, all neutral outcomes. Other efforts were in uh, Lutonix uh, platforms, uh, six months data published, long-term follow-up presented, randomized controlled trial, two to one, again, run, uh, critical limb ischemia, R4 to R6, 442 patients this time around, and again, no significant difference between uh, placotaxel-based coded technology versus POVA. Uh, Biolux, Biotronics also published a randomized control trial, smaller patient subset, critical limb ischemia, BTK space, again, no significant difference between the two. So draw-coated balloons versus standard balloon angioplasty um, really pan out not to be positive for pachytaxel-based technology. Uh, another trial was recently published, 138 patients, again, same results. And what about scaffolding? We just showed, um, so he'll just show the Saval trial, uh, two to one randomization, 201 patients, lesions that are less than 14 uh, centimeters, more than 70% stenosis as inclusion criteria, a nitrile self-expanding stent with uh, pachytaxel formulated uh, dosing, and you saw this recently, no really significant difference in primary patency, and MAE free rates are essentially the same. So, what, what went wrong? I, I think there is uh, more than one thing, and I just got surprised by this talk, the, maybe the design of the stent itself that showed a 12 months 90% um, patency rate, maybe that's what it is, it's the design of the stent, or maybe it's the wrong drug, or maybe it's the wrong excipient, or maybe it's the wrong technology altogether. And certainly the environment, um, the CLI population is difficult, uh, uh, high attrition rates, et cetera. So a, lo a lot of variables to come with a single answer about why we fail, but we do have to have a failure analysis. So when you analyze, for example, the LIMAS technology in, in hypoxia versus placitaxel, you see that taxel based they, they don't perform as good in hypoxic environments compared to non-hypoxic environments, so that may be a reason. Maybe calcification is also another. Maybe the runoff is affecting. There's so many variables that are really uh, behind the lines of explaining why we're failing. But the bottom line, and, and the lesion length too, and we just, so he'll just show this as well. In the BTK space, longer lesions compared to the DES stents in the BTK space that were shorter lesions when they study and there were positive studies. The no flow or slow flow phenomenon also associated with uh, taxol based uh, products, knowing that when you have a slow flow, the groups tend to do worse compared to the non-flow and embolization and toxicity to the, the wounds. So lots of stuff, and uh, I was requested to 
have some sort of obituary about this, and when you come to the cemetery and you see Pakitaksu there and you visit all the different things that I just talked to you about, you know, the question was this, I really do want to be merciful, but based on the evidence, I think the answer is yes. Um, so I want to have some hope at the end. This is the second wave, and uh, we just heard from two internationally renowned investigators. This is what we have in the United States right now. We do not have any drug-coded technology yet, but it's coming. We do have you know, on-label spirits, and we have off-label drug-coded uh, drug-eluting stents to be used. So certainly there is some hope in this space, and this is dedicated to my dad, who had recently passed, and I miss you so much. Thank you so much.